The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we're gonna be talking with a couple of experts from the Department of Revenue about, yes, taxes, it's time. But it doesn't have to be a terrible experience and there's lots of great programs out there to help you save on your taxes, as well as resources to help you figure out what you need to do. We have a lot of information for you, so stay tuned, don't go anywhere. No one likes to have to ask for help. It's a courageous act. Sarah Solomon, Energy Share Coordinator. Our clients work hard, sometimes at two or even three jobs, but still struggle to keep the heat on. They're doing everything they can. They're proud and they don't give up. I feel inspired and honored to work together with these Montana families. To donate, call 888-779-7589 or go to EnergyShareMT.com. Energy Share, you can help your neighbor stay warm. I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounting secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. Respite care is amazing. If you are capable of doing it, the rewards are beyond measure. Stephanie Young, respite care provider, on the unexpected benefits of helping people in need. Being a respite care provider is an amazing experience. It's something that what you give, you get back a hundredfold. You receive so much more than you could ever imagine. To find out how to change lives, including your own, go to respite.mt.gov. Hi everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kim Everman, and we're going to be talking taxes today because it's that time. It's mid-January, it's time for us to be thinking, we got to get this done, taken care of, whatever, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. And every year about this time, we ask our friends to send us some experts from the tax uh, bureaus over at uh, uh, Department of Revenue. Um, today, we're so lucky we have Chelsea Gomez. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. And Chelsea is the um, public information officer over there. And we also have Bryce Katz, and Bryce is a unit manager. Um, and we're going to start talking with Bryce, first of all, about um, the Montana Disabled Veterans Program. Because let's talk about the good stuff up front. It, it, taxes are coming. Nobody likes to pay anything if they don't have to. And the, the, you guys have some great pro uh, programs to talk about today that might help save some money for you, like the Disabled Veteran. Uh, yeah, we have a... Two programs, actually. The first one that you just mentioned, the Montana Disabled Veterans Program. Um, now, these are actually property tax relief based programs, but it is based, part of the qualification is based on what your federal adjusted gross income is. Okay. And then the property tax assistance program, Bryce, what's, what's that? Um, yeah, similar to the Montana Disabled Veterans, we have a property tax assistance program as well, or commonly known as PTAP, that also one of the qualifications is you have to fall within a certain criteria as far as your federal adjusted gross income is. But both of those can go towards actually lowering your property tax bill that you would uh, receive this coming fall. Okay. And how do you find out about those? How do you, how do you even get hooked up to, to take advantage of those programs, Bryce? 
Sure. Um, so there's a couple qualifying criteria that you'll have to meet in order to receive those potential benefits. They're similar programs, but there is a couple differences for the Montana Disables Veterans Program. Um, first, both programs have an, have an ownership requirement, so you have to own your property. Um, secondly, they both have a residency requirement, and that's that you live in that property for at least seven months of the year as your primary residence. Um, then they both have the income qualifying criteria that you have to meet. And for the property tax assistance program, if you're a single filer, your income, your federal adjusted gross income would have to be $23,385 or less to qualify. And then if you file as married or head of household, uh, the maximum allowable federal adjusted gross income to qualify would be $31,181. And then based on your income, there's either an 80%, 50%, or 30% reduction in property taxes that you might qualify for. And that is limited to the first $200,000 in market value of your property. Okay. But still, even though there's parameters, you should check it out if you think it might give you a hand. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As you're filing your income tax, um, you know, if you go to a preparer, you know, talk to them about it. They're usually aware of these programs, but just kind of keep those income thresholds in mind. And if you think you do qualify, even if you're close, not sure, go ahead. Um, you can go to our website, which I believe will be put up on the screen. Yep, we'll do um, it. Our application forms are available on our website. Um, you know, we do have field offices, local Department of Revenue property assessment field offices located throughout the state. You can find contact information for those offices on the website as well. And if you were to go into any one of those offices in per person, our staff there are more than, help, uh, more than ready to help you get you that application and help you fill it out. Super. That sounds just super. So Chelsea, I have a question for you. Where is my refund? Because you kind of <laughs> you kind of know some stuff about that, don't you? And we just have a couple of minutes, but we want to start talking about how we track this and if we can do it with technology or a paper copy, whatever. What, what would you have to say? Yes. Yeah, so um, tax season has officially begun and people started filing. And of course, the biggest question we always receive is, where's my refund? <laughs> um, and it's all it's easy to find out where your refund is online by visiting our website at mtrevenue.gov. Um, there's a button right on the home page, and it says, where's my refund? You'll click it and just need to enter a little bit of um, personal information to verify it's you. And in a few minutes, you'll find out if your refund has been received by the department, if it's currently processing, or if there's some sort of delay in getting your refund to you. And if you're familiar with our transaction portal, there's a link on the homepage there as well to find out where your refund is. Um, and I do wanna note that it can take up to 90 days to, re to process refunds and get those out to you. Um, and that's just because of issues with identity theft and fraudulent tax filings that do exist, unfortunately. Um, and of course the department takes a lot of measures and precautions to make sure that when we get a tax refund, tax return, um, the refund being issued to the individual is, it's being issued to the individual it should be issued to. Um, we do also recommend that you set up your um, refund as a direct deposit. That just helps you get your refund faster. Um, and most people do get the refunds by direct deposit because it's very secure. Right. You know, and I have to say that that's one of the funnest things about tax season for me, which is I need a life because I love to check and see where my refund is. And I think a lot of people, you just you just are, are curious. You hope that what you did was right and it got accepted. And so, you know, that's that's kind of, uh, I guess, a little bit of a bright spot for tax season is you can check and see how far out. And frankly, you guys do a great job. It's never been 90 days for me i can see where you might because you run into problems but i it seems like in montana we get it really quickly um, and that's a part of filing electronically and we're going to talk about that in our next segment folks it is impact it, you just have to reach out get the resources that you need and get those taxes done and then where's your refund come right back
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. I've been shooting since I was young. It's something I've always enjoyed. I wasn't feeling like myself, but my friend noticed. He asked if he could hold onto my guns temporarily. At first, I was a little shocked. But then I agreed. I think he saved my life that day. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. My goal is to keep my patients safe, and my goal from the beginning has always been to keep my patients safe. Most of the time, these are elderly people. Taking care of these people, it, it terrifies me, and I'm scared for patients who are not vaccinated. I'm petrified for these folks because we just see how quickly they can go down in flames. But the way out of the pandemic is the vaccine, and we have it. It's at our grasp. We can end this game over if we get enough people vaccinated. Hello folks, welcome back to Aging Horizons, talking about taxes today. But the good news is that there's a lot of safe, easy ways that you can get your taxes done quickly, get that refund quickly. There are programs that we can uh, make you aware of that will help maybe bring your tax bill down. And we just wanna give you the good information today. So we have with us Bryce Katz, and Bryce is the unit manager over at, a uh, unit manager over at the Department of Revenue. Bryce, thanks for being back. Thank you. And then we also have uh, Chelsea Gomez, and Chelsea is the public information officer over in that neck of the woods. And Chelsea, I want to talk to you about the safety and, and, the, and the competency that we have found being able to file electronically. Yes. Um, so the department highly encourages individuals to file electronically. I mean, if you do file electronically, you're more likely to receive your refund more quickly than if you were to file on paper, which is great. Um, and the reason for the quick turnaround um, is it's just less work for the Department of Revenue employees to process the return and less chance of an error being made. Um, and of course, we do ex still accept paper returns. And we also have improved options to make it easier to file electronically through our transaction portal, which can be accessed through our website at mtrevenue.gov. Um, we also have a great tool called MT Quick File, which is rather new, that is available to you if you have simple taxes I want to file online, and it's also free, which is great. Um, Chelsea, I just want to stop you for one second and ask, what does it mean if you have simple taxes? Can you just define that a little bit for people? Yeah, of course, so you don't have a lot of breakdowns on your taxes, you're not... Um, like lots uh -huh. of property or lots yep. of businesses, or if you exactly. just have the yep. basic run of the mill. Okay. Yep, basic, basic, simple taxes. And there's a question questionnaire on our website that you can take to see if you qualify. So it'll just ask you a few questions of how you're filing, if you're filing um, single, if you're filing married or separately. Um, and to, it'll let you know if you do qualify to use MT Quick File and then give you instructions from there on how to file with MT Quick File. Well, we're going to put your website um, up on the screen and along with your phone number because I just, I just think it's really important. The electronic filing is all the things that you've just, just described, Chelsea. But what if you're a person that doesn't really have a lot of faith in technology? How can you be sure it's safe? It's safe, it's tested, we've tested it and made sure that um, that it is secure because it's um, 
personal information, we want to make sure that we're being as safe as we can as the Department of Revenue receiving your information. But if you do feel unsure or uneasy about filing electronically, you can always file by paper. We, all, we will always accept paper returns as well. And I think you can um, check with uh, any of the tax preparers. To Where do people get the paper forms anymore? You know, it's been so long since I've filed paper, I wouldn't even know where to go. So I'm assuming a tax preparer. Yes, and you can also, um, there, the forms are also available on our website. Oh, at great. Yep. And if you call um, our call center at 444-6900 and request a paper form, they can get that sent to you as well. Oh, great. That's, that's great. Um, so let's also talk about elderly homeowner and renter tax credits, because those are, are pretty important, Chelsea, to bringing down that tax bill. Yes, um, so the elderly homeowner and renter tax credit is a really great credit to take advantage of if you qualify and it's super easy to apply for. Um, it's for lower income seniors and it's a property tax relief program that provides a refundable income tax credit of up to $1,000. Um, and to be eligible for this credit, you just have to be 62 years or older on December 31st, have to have lived in Montana for at least nine months out of the year um, and have to have rented, owned, or leased a home in Montana for six months and have a household income of under $45,000. And, um, and it, sounds like there, you, it sounds like your website is awesome. Like it has lots and lots of stuff. Is that a good place for somebody to go to look up these resources? Absolutely. Um, yeah, if you have questions about this credit or any other credits you may be eligible for, um, visit our website. We have a lot of great information. Again, it's mtrevenue.gov. And our call center is also very knowledgeable and available to help. Um, they can be reached during normal business hours at 444-406-6900. And Chelsea, another question about um, just the the filing and, and your, your website and such. Um, you said that you can get the actual paper forms there that you can download, right? Yep, you can download the forms right from our website. And what about, um, and you also said, okay, and you also said that, that you have all of those sorts of in informational um, supports there if someone's not really sure what they need to do or, or um, what forms they even need, right? Yes. And um, the elderly homeowner and renter tax credit, do you have to re- apply for that every year or is that once you once you are found eligible if your circumstances don't change it do you have to reapply each year you know what that's a great question i'm not sure about that okay well we and we could find out um yes yes we can and I know, go ahead yeah and um i wanted to mention that um even if you do you can qualify for this credit even if you do not have to file an income tax return as well. Yeah, paid. that. thank you. That's a really good point, Chelsea, because that's what I was thinking is there's so many older adults that are not, uh, don't have to file taxes, mm -hmm. but they shouldn't miss out on these credits if they're, if they're eligible. Well, thanks Absolutely. for that. And folks, again, tax does not, tax time does not have to be scary and awful. If you have simple taxes to file, which just means you don't have lots of stuff and lots of places that you have to take a, a ding here and there, just do a simple file to your taxes online. It's safe, it's quick, it's easy, and you'll get your refund pretty quick. Now come back, we have some more information. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least 1 in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or Adult Protective Services at 1-844-277-9300. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. 
Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. Did you just text me? I didn't want to disturb you if you were sleeping. Sleeping? I'm sitting right next to you, silly. There you are. Hey, I found a couple of Medicare helping programs online that I think we ought to look into. Hmm. It says if we qualify, we can get help paying for our prescription drugs. Oh, and there's a program that can help pay our Part B premium. To learn more about extra help and Medicare savings programs, call your local SHIP counselor today. Maybe I better text him. When I found out it was diabetes, my first thought was, Barb, you need help. You have to take con control of this. There is help. My doctor gave me a phone number. I called and signed up with a diabetes educator. There is help. I have to put blinders on when I walk past the bakery counter. I can feel my blood sugar go up. You succeed a little at a time. If you have diabetes, help is available. You do not have to do it alone. Ask your doctor about diabetes education or visit Montana211.org. Hi folks, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here talking about getting your taxes done and getting the most um, from programs and tax credits that are available to you, um, getting the most, making the most of those if you're eligible. We have with us Bryce Katz. Uh, he's a unit manager over at uh, the Department of Revenue. Bryce, always good to have you. Thanks for having me. Sure. And we have Chelsea Gomez. And Chelsea, you're the public information officer over there. And we're going to we're going to talk about something that we didn't know the answer for last segment, which is those tax credits are tax credits. They're not a program necessarily. So you do that every year, correct? Yes, you have to apply for the tax credit every year. Okay. Um, and it, even if you thought you might have qualified last year, the year before and didn't claim it, um, you can submit a, an amended return and potentially receive that credit, which is great. Wow, that is great news. Um, so if you didn't know about this program and you might have been eligible a year or so ago, you can still maybe get that, that tax credit. That yes. is awesome. Well, now let's talk about remote workers, Chelsea, because I know that's that's been a big, big, big deal in our last couple of years in our nation and in Montana. Um, what do you what do you need to tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, as we all know, a lot of people began to work remotely due to the pandemic, and some still continue to work remotely, even though we're hopefully at the tail end of COVID nineteen. Um, many people came from out of state to Montana and continue their jobs um, remotely while in Montana. And generally this creates a filing requirement, um, even if the individual is not considered a resident. And the, um, the important thing for those individuals to need to remember is that if you came to Montana and you worked in Montana and you earned income in Montana, you owe Montana state income tax. Wow, good point. And I would <laughs> never have even thought of that. Um, so what should remote workers do that are in the situation that you described? Should they go to your website maybe and get some information? Yes, reach out, um, reach out to us, visit our website. We have a lot of great information on our website, again, at mtrevenue.gov. Um, we also do encourage people to look at that information up um, and look closely at the rules in their home states as well, because each state differs. Right, and you want to know the rules. You don't, you know, I don't think anybody wants to be out there breaking rules, tax rules especially, but it's hard to know. It, it, in the last couple of years, it's felt like information has been just a moving target about everything almost. Um, so it's good to know um, these these sorts of points from you guys so that we can kind of move on and not, not skip the taxes that we owe. That's good to know. Now, what about things like current addresses and stuff like that? Because that's, that's so important, and that ties in to when you file, if you don't have that on board, you might not see your check for a while. Can you talk about that, Chelsea? Yes, keeping your address current is a huge one. Um, it's important that the Montana Department of Revenue has your current mailing address because we may need to correspond with you. We do send mail to people and we don't want that correspondence to be delayed. And as you mentioned, for those individuals who receive paper checks, which is first all first time filers, we wanna make sure that your check gets to you. Um, so if you move, if you, you file your return and then move, just be sure to let us know um, 
And you can always update your address on our website mm. at m2revenue.gov. Wow. Um, That's great news. Yes. <laughs> There's a form you can fill out and submit it to us and we can get that taken care of for you. And Chelsea, here's a question that I, uh, that I have since we're talking about this. Um, we tell older adults all the time that Social Security isn't going to call them or, or different places are not going to. How about you guys? Will you ever call a constituent if they haven't, if they haven't reached out to you first? We will send letters, and that's a great point because if you're ever unsure of whether or not a letter you receive is actually from the Department of Revenue, feel free to contact us. Reach out to us, visit our website, and we have a contact form on our website. You can always call our call center, 406-444-6900, um, um, just, to, just to make sure that you're not... Um, being scammed because scams do exist, unfortunately. Yeah, well, and and that's why I ask because um, you know, it, anytime there's money involved, anytime there's a financial stake involved, it seems like the bad nicks come out and try to take advantage of everybody. Um, so it's good to know. Um, and also, Chelsea, in terms, of, let's. I I, I want to really talk about your website because it sounds great. You can go there and get forms and the whole nine yards, right? Yes, absolutely. And you can find all kinds of resources. Everything you need should be on our website. And if you have any questions um, that you're not finding, you can always contact us. Okay. Give us a call. Okay. And, and Bryce, you know, you and I have talked so many times about this Montana Disabled Veteran Program. I love it. I'm so glad you have it. Anything you want to say about that? Is it, it you know, shouldn't veterans be reaching out as well? Um, yeah, absolutely. So we talked a little bit about the PTAP program in detail. Um, it's the same criteria for the most part for the Montana Disabled Veterans. You have to own the property, live in it at least seven months of the year as your primary residence, um, fall within the income qualification criteria. And there's one additional uh, criteria to qualify for that program, and that's that um, you either have to be rated 100% disabled from the VA or paid at the 100% rate. Right. Or if you're a surviving spouse, you can qualify as well. And for a surviving spouse to qualify, um, your qualifying veteran spouse had to have been 100% rated or paid at the 100% rate when they passed, or their passing had to have been as of a, the result of a service-connected disability right. or while on active duty. Great. Well, I'm so glad we could sort of finish up with some more on the veteran program because you know how much I love it. And we talk about it every time and I get excited for veterans every time because I want them to check it out. Thank you both for being with us today. And thanks so much for, I, I feel better knowing you're there and I can call if I need to. So thanks to you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. And folks. It, it, reach out, get those taxes done. Don't let it keep you awake at night. Don't wake up worried and in a panic. Get it done. For Aging Horizons, I'm Kimmy Everman. Thanks for being with us today. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.